Could we please give the police departments to the grandmothers? Give them the salaries and the pensions and the city vehicles, but make them a fleet of vintage Corvettes, Jaguars, and Cadillacs with white leather interior, diamond in the back, sunroof top, and dig in the scene with a gangster lean. Let the cars be badass. You could hear the old school jams like Patti LaBelle, Anita Baker, and Al Green. You would hear Sweet Honey and the Rock harmonizing on We Who Believe in Freedom Will Not Rest, bumping out the speakers and they got the booming system. It's, if you up to mischief, they will pick you up swiftly in their sweet ride and look at you until you catch shame and look down at your lap. She asks you if you are hungry and you say yes, and of course you are. She got a crown of dreadlocks and on the dashboard you see brown faces like yours, shea buttered and loved up. And there are no precincts, just love temples that got spaces to meditate and eat delicious food, mangoes, blueberries, nectarines, cornbread, peas and rice, fried plantain, fufu, yams, greens, okra, pecan pie, salad and lemonade, things that make your wa mouth water and your soul arise. All the hungry bellies know warmth. All the children expect love. The grandmothers help you with homework, practice yoga with you, and teach you how to make jambalaya and coconut cake from scratch. When you're sleepy, she will start humming and rub your back while you drift off. A song that she used to sing and have the record to when she was your age. She remembers how it felt like to be you and be young and not know the world that good. Grandma is a sacred child herself who just circled the sun enough times into the ripeness of her cronehood. She wants your life to be sweeter. When you are wilding out because your heart is broke or you don't have what you need, the grandmothers take your hand and lead you to their garden. You can lay down against the flowers, her grasses, roses, dahlias, irises, lilies, collards, kale, eggplants, blackberries. She wants you to know that you are safe and protected, universal, limitless, sacred. We are four black youth interns from St. Paul Neighboring Network and we were curious about this year's May Day theme. Well, in the Heart of the Beast Puppet and Mask Theater um, is the organization that makes May Day. And um, it started, let's see, 41 years ago with just a small group of people who wanted to make a, a response to the Vietnam War and to bring people together in a celebratory way. And, uh, it's just grown and grown and grown since that time. Every year, May Day has a different theme. Black is Sacred is something that really came through then um, after we decided that that would be the theme. Um, layers and layers of discussion again um, until the Black is Sacred emerged as a core image, as a core words that would be said that we would see with the uh, incredible vibrant images that um, unfolded with that. I grew up in a community in which a huge world-renowned theater performance work was created and it was I feel like um, an opportunity for I think people who may not necessarily have to go to a museum to be connected with some really powerfully, deeply pulsing work. And I think the Heart of the Beast Theater um, is really powerful in that it's been consistently um, a part of the community and wanting to bring issues to the table through art. So I feel like for me, just growing up in South Minneapolis, it certainly was one of the many things that influenced kind of my approach as, as an artist and that I really like to do work that includes the community, that um, intersects with the community, that engages the community. Black is sacred means it's political, it's social, it's cultural, but it's also a psychological affirmation to a, a collective identity of people who knows that their genuine hu humanness is a sacred space for themselves. But black is sacred um, and Black Lives Matter kind of connotes from the same affirming stance. Politically, it's declaring, um, it's a voice and a perspective from a marginalized group of people who's declaring that in this country we are valuable and not only are we valuable we're going to force larger institutions and the dominant culture to recognize our value and our worthiness 
So I think it speaks to a, a lot of respectability politics. But two, I think um, they're both political and social in the sense that um, black folks and allies within the black community are forcing and, and reaffirming their space in communities and um, in neighborhoods and in society. We're claiming our space and making it clear that not only are we a sacred people and we have a sacred space that is respected by a lot of different institutions and efforts and movements and people, but our lives matter. And then no law enforcement agency, no state authority or no um, corporation, no business or no body politics can infringe upon the value and the worthiness of our lives to be citizens and to be humans in this country. My name is Maria Mitchell and I'm a Hennepin County Public Defender. So I work in Hennepin County, which is Minneapolis and the surrounding suburbs. And I defend indigent defendants, people who don't have money. I provide criminal defense for them as an attorney. I also am the president of the Minnesota Association of Black Lawyers. A lot of times, very frustrating to be African American and work in the criminal justice system because um, it's kind of sad to see um, so many people who look like me or similar to me who are of African American heritage having to struggle their way through the legal process. As far as being discriminated against, yeah, that happens too. I mean, sometimes you get followed in the store or you don't get a job that you think you're qualified for. And sometimes you don't know why it is and other times you believe that it's because it's racism or prejudice. So even though my skin is fairer, if I am around all Caucasians, I stick out. I'm Misha Grimm. I'm an organizer with Black Lives Matter Minneapolis. Uh, I was charged as being one of the organizers of the event at the Mall of America. And getting charged actually was really, it wasn't really scary to be honest with you. It was kind of funny because I knew when they charged me, they just didn't have that much to go off of. Um, when I heard about Sandra Bland, um, I think it, I was scared, but I also just realized that it made things a lot more real and apparent to people because I think for a long time, they always thought it was only a certain type of black person that was being treated poorly by the police. But now we have this case of this woman that had been like covered up really well. And she was someone who a lot of people that a lot of people can identify with and a lot of people like know people who are like her. So I think it like put a lot of stuff into perspective and made police brutality like more real to people. I feel like there's ways that we can feel free and there's parts and times. I feel like as, I don't know, maybe we're always free. I don't know, I feel like there's a part of us that like is enticing to the world because there's just a freeness to us, you know, despite all the ways that we're bound. But I also do see like a shadow, like a sort of heaviness that I think exists. Are we free? Yeah. Well, I think as African Americans, there have been different times in this country where we've always felt like We've been bound and confined, but I think that in our minds, we've always been free. I think I'm free in certain moments. I know that there's things that hold me back, but I also know that what's really true is like those moments when I'm dancing and I'm not worried about what anybody's thinking about me or when I'm with my people and we're singing songs for no reason, just because we want to. Those moments, like, they can never take that stuff from us. You know what I'm saying? They could never take our culture, our history. They could never take our people, our ancestors. They could never take the love. They could never take the memories. So at the end of the day, yeah, I'm free. I think of myself as free. I live this world and this reality how I see it, how I view it, so. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America into the republic for which we stand, one nation. Get out of the car! 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 Get out of the One nation. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. For all.
for all. Pledge allegiance to the body of the earth and all the beings who dwell together as one in diversity with liberty and justice for all.